welcome back to my channel and if you're new welcome to my channel <sighs> I literally just talked to the camera for like the last I think 10 minutes and it recorded nothing because I ran out of space okay I'm gonna have to start over I guess and the leg is falling asleep so that's not good um, let's get into the video today I'm gonna be talking about what I wish I'd bought before I went on my no buy um, and a lot of these things might have been released for like ages and some of them might have been released after my no buy started and I'm not really entirely sure because I think it started somewhere around November 29th or 30th. Anyways, some of these products might have come out before or after. I don't really know. Um, the first product that I wish I had bought, um, I'll start with a lip product because I've only got one. I wish I bought the Fenty Gloss Balm in Fussy. It's such a beautiful pink and I don't think I have a gloss like that in my collection, but I used to. So. I wish I bought that, but it's okay. Um, for, um, I guess, face products, I wish, or let's say a base. The Urban Decay Optical Illusion Primer, that's the pore blurring one that they have. I wish I'd bought that. Um, I have a sample size of it and I've used one or two pumps of it and I'm refusing to use it right now because I don't want to run out of that first because that might be the one I end up buying when I use up everything else. Um, so that's what I wish I bought for primer. Um, and then I wish I had bought a BB cream or a CC cream. And I wish I bought the Smashbox BB cream because that's my favorite. I think I've been through maybe two of those in the past. I wish I bought that one day. <laughs> one day but I think that the only reason I'm stopping myself from buying it now I don't have a BB cream but the only reason I think I'm stopping myself from buying one right now is because I do have a tinted moisturizer that I really ever use so I'm trying to use that up and once I use that up I think I'll let myself buy that and then I wish I bought the It Cosmetics CC cream I have tried a sample of that before that I got from Sephora and I think it took it with me to Hawaii or I used it before I went to Hawaii I can't remember now but I really really liked how that looked on my skin it was just so I was just so nice and easy it was fresh and it looked like skin which was really nice um, so maybe one day because I think that and the Smashbox one are around the same price range as well I remember liking how Smashbox looked on my skin as well so I might have to go and get uh, little samples of them when I'm ready to kind of pick and choose and buy one and then for powder products I wish that I bought the MAC mineralized skin finish and I actually did purchase this I purchased it during the 20% off sale that went on in November and this was before the holiday bonus sale um, I think it was the second time around they threw in the Rouge 20% off weekend or whatever it was but I um, I did buy it but I couldn't remember what color and I bought it from Sephora I should say sorry because Sephora online carries MAC or at least in Canada it does I'm not sure about anywhere else but I ordered it off of sorry I'm just checking if I'm recording because I don't want to go through that again so I ordered it off of Sephora's website and I ordered light medium thinking that that was the color that I was or did I order just medium I think I might have ordered just medium anyways yeah I don't think I ordered light medium I think I ordered just medium but it was just way too light that I had to go and return it in store and then I didn't bother ordering another one and then I went on my no buy and then I told myself I couldn't buy one yet because I have the hourglass ambient lighting powder which I actually use pretty much all over my face I think in my hmm, was it my project pan video I think I said in my project pan video that I um, use one of the shades under my eyes and I use the other two mixed in all over my face Lately, I've just been mixing all three and using them all over my face because I feel like that's the only way I'm going to get use out of them. And it actually creates a really nice finish. It's kind of glowy, but it's not too glowy. So I really like that. So because I have that one and that's the only pressed powder that I have, I'm going to wait until I use that up and then I'll probably go and get my MAC Mineralized Skin Finish 
I've gone through two or three of those before, so I know I'll get through that um, as well. And then I do already have um, powder or setting powders that are loose powders, so I don't need to go buy loose powders. But then, you know what, tell me in the comments below, do you think that if I have loose powders and I don't have a pressed powder when I finish my hourglass powder, would it be reasonable for me to go out and buy a pressed powder, like, or even a mineralized powder that's not a loose powder? Would you categorize those as different things? So I feel like I don't always use loose powder and it's nice to be able to carry a compact that has a pressed powder in case I want to touch up through the day. That makes sense. I think I'm reasonable in saying that once I finish the ambient lighting powder that I'm allowed to go and buy a pressed powder, right? Let me know below what you think. Um, so that's another product that I wish I bought. And then I wish I bought setting sprays. And the two that I wish I bought was the Morphe Continuous Setting Spray because I just like the idea of it just being a continuous spray and the mister looks so good from what I've seen on other YouTubers' um, videos. And then the other one that I know that I love because I had a sample of it and I finished up my sample and now I don't have any was the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. Oh my gosh, it was just beautiful finish. It lasted all day long and now I'm out. So I think I'm using my e.l.f. one right now, which I mean, it's not terrible, but I wish I had the Urban Decay. When I'm done all my setting sprays, one of those two will be coming into my collection. I just don't know which one yet. Um, I think that's pretty much it for complexion products. So there's actually two blushes that I wish I'd bought. And one of them is an exact color. The other one's just a specific brand that I've been wanting to try. So the specific blush that I know I wanted was the Hourglass blush in Mood Exposure. Whether it was in the sample, or not the sample, but the mini or the large, I just wish I'd bought one. Um, so maybe in 2020 I'll allow myself to buy one because I'm not going to get through all my blushes this year, so I won't be replacing anything. Um, and the other one is Jouer. I want to try a Jouer blush, and I just saw that they came out with a I think it's like a blush palette or a blush book. I am dying inside right now, you guys, because I can't buy it because I'm on my no buy. And I don't know if that's limited edition. And normally I get anxiety about these limited edition products. I'm not going to do that to myself. If it's available next year, I will think about it. And if it's something I feel like I can fit into my collection at that time, I will go ahead and do it. But I'm not going to beat myself down about this one. I do wish I could have bought it though. I wish I could have bought the Anastasia Beverly Hills and Emrezi highlighter. Um, I don't know if it has a shade name, but it's, you know, you've seen it. It's a beautiful little compact and it's got a wavy texture to it and it's a gold. And the only reason I feel like I wish I'd bought it is because I used to have a gold-ish highlight and it was by Makeup Revolution. Beautiful, beautiful shade. I forget what it's called, but it shattered. And so I actually ended up throwing it away because the compact broke and I couldn't keep it anywhere. And then I saw a YouTuber, and I can't remember who it was, pull out a baggie, like a Ziploc bag. And she just had her highlight powder in there and she just stuck her brush in there and she just stuck it on. Who was it? I think it's Allie Glines, maybe. It might be Allie Glines, um, if I'm not wrong. And I don't remember which highlight it was that she broke or whatever, but I wish I had kept that one. But that's the same kind of tone that one has. Although I've heard mixed reviews, I've heard it's not that great, but then I've heard it's so great. Let me know what you think below. I don't think it's something that I'll end up buying in 2020. I don't see myself buying it unless something really, really extravagant comes out by then. But I think I'm kind of almost over the highlight phase. You probably couldn't tell by my makeup. <laughs> I'm not over it yet. Um, but some days I like to just go matte. Like I think the yesterday or the day before I wore makeup, I didn't bother put, putting on any highlight. I just didn't want any glow. I just wanted a matte face. And the other product I wish I bought was the Charlotte Tilbury Bronze and Glow Duo. I've heard so many good things about those products. I've never tried any of the Charlotte Tilbury um, 
complexion products. The only thing I have by her, well, I have a blush. So I have a blush, I have a lipstick, and a lip liner. And that's pretty much all I've tried by Charlotte Tilbury. So I've never tried any of like the foundations, concealers, air brush powder, whatever it's called. Um, but I wish I would have bought that. That's something I probably will buy next year. We'll see. Okay, and then another product I wish I bought was the, sorry, I'm just looking at my phone because I don't remember what it was called. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. Um, I just like the nice glowiness this gives some people, and I wish I had this for the springtime. I don't know what kind of um, product you would consider this. Would you consider it to be a primer, or is it entirely a different category? Can you let me know below what you would think that it is? Because maybe I can put it on a list, like a birthday list or something. I don't know. It is something that I do want. So if I don't buy it this year, maybe next year in 2020. But how would you categorize that? So eyeshadow palettes. I wish I had bought a cool toned eyeshadow palette. And there's a few that I had my eyes on. There was the Dose of Colors in the 5 pan palette I forget what it's called um, I'll insert the name and a photo of it somewhere on the screen here that's one that I wish I'd got so the Tarte Tartlet in Bloom is another one that I wish I got because that looks like a beautiful cool tone palette the only reason I hesitated with that one is because I have the Tartiste Pro and the formula is not my favorite is it a similar formula do you have both let me know if it's similar I find it just too powdery too creamy and then I feel like it just doesn't blend right like there's just something about it that just doesn't blend right to me like I like subculture more than I like my Tartiste Pro so that's probably saying something um and then the other cool tone palette I wish I got was the ABH um sultry palette because oh my god number one the packaging is beautiful um, but the shade that I wish I bought it for is that silvery shade, which is called, I think, Cyborg. Oh, I just want the perfect cool tone palette. And there were a lot of good cool tone palette releases. I just couldn't bring myself to buying one. I love cool tone shadows. And it's weird because I don't know if they compliment me because I have warmer skin tone. But I really am just drawn to cool tone colors. I don't know what it is. Um, and then there's the Huda Beauty Smoky Obsessions. That was another mini that I wish I'd bought before going on my no-buy. And the one reason is because it has some of the colors that I wish I'd gotten from those other palettes I just mentioned. But it was more affordable because it was only 35 Canadian dollars and not, you know, 55 plus. So that... Those are some of the things that I wish I'd bought before going on this no buy. Um, for other palettes, the only other one I can think of that I would have wanted was the Dose of Colors Desi and Katie Friendcation palette. And I wanted it when it went on sale, but I think the sale was after my no buy had already started, so I didn't let myself buy it. Um, and I think that sale was at Ulta or something, I don't remember. Oh, I wish I got it because the colors in that just look gorgeous and everyone I see talking about it says they pick it up so often and I feel kind of jealous. I don't know, that mossy green color that's in there, the blue, just all of it. I, I wish I'd bought that before going on this no buy. And I think that's pretty much it. I think that covers it for skincare. There's not really anything that I wish I'd buy bought because I really wanted it. The only thing I think that I want to try, and I wish I had it, but I can wait for this. It's not something I'm like, oh, I need it right now. And that's the Youth to the People um, Green Tea and Kale Cleanser, I think is what it's called. I'm just going to double check. The cleanser that I wish I bought was the Superfood Face Wash by Youth to the People. And it's the kale and green tea, spinach and vitamins um, face wash. I have the moisturizer in just a little tiny sample. It was like a 100 point part. So I tried it and I loved it. 
and the day before my no buy what I purchased was a set that came with that and their facial oil which I haven't opened yet actually I'm leaving it in the package until I've gone through other things and actually need it so that's just gonna sit there until then um and if you're on a no buy what are some products that you wish you bought before going on your no buy leave some comments below let me know because i'm really curious to see what other people would have wanted and are there things that you rush to buy before your no buy like were you planning your no buy unlike me um you know if you were planning it did you plan it thoroughly in a way where you got to purchase everything that you wish you were gonna or that you thought you would need or want in 2019. My no buy was a bit sporadic. It wasn't something that I planned or anticipated. It was something kind of uh, that happened on the spot. I made the decision and I said, I'm going on a no buy after this purchase. And that was it. And that happened on my last purchase was either uh, November 29th or 30th. I feel like it was the 29th. Um, so November 30th would have been the first day of my no buy. So that means all of December. I missed Christmas presents for other people, but like things for myself. Um, and then when I say things, and I feel like I should probably clarify it as well, because I looked back at my original no buy year video and I feel like I may have been a little bit vague. I should say that my no buy is specific to makeup and that's because I have a lot of makeup and I don't use makeup on the daily often enough or whatever. Some of my things have been sitting there for years and I just needed to make use of them somehow and so when I saw Hannah's video I was like this is genius, why am I not doing this? And so that's why I decided to do my no by year. But that's why I decided to do my no by year. It wasn't so much that I wanted to go on an entire no by year. I would still like to be able to buy things here and there that I enjoy or like. I mean, I'm not gonna restrict myself from food, um, you know, hygiene stuff, clothing. I don't buy a lot of clothing, like I said. So when I do buy clothing, I'm very kinda, I look for sales and budgets. I don't just buy a whole bunch of things because, oh my god, this is cheap. And now when I'm in stores, I go, oh, okay, this is on sale for, I don't know, $10. But do I really need it? Am I going to wear it enough? No. You know what? I'm going to wait a little while and maybe I'll buy it later on, even if it is regular price again or whatever it may be. Um, so I don't find myself purchasing a lot of clothes. Another thing I kind of needed to stop was buying candles. I buy a lot of candles and most of them from Bath and Body Works. And because I bargain shop a lot, I don't find it to be a huge problem for me. And that's why my channel will probably be geared towards my makeup no buy, but I'll still include other things in my empties and things may change along the way because you know what reality is, things change. And I made a point about this in my Project Pan video where I said I would allow myself to change out products if I get bored of them. We're humans. We get bored. <laughs> you know, we enjoy something for so long that before we need to change it. But why change it with something new? Why go spend money on something new to change it out? You know, change it out with something in your collection. So I've been doing that with things like my candles, for example. I'm bored of the smell. Okay, well I have 10 other ones to choose from, so I'm going to go pick one of those scents, and that's what I'm going to light. And so that's what I mean by my no buy. I'm going to do a lot of like shopping my own stash. I don't know if I'll be doing videos about that just yet, but that's kind of the idea. And, and when I finish a category, I can go buy something new and I can enjoy it, but I don't need to go buy five of that category you know so that was the whole thing um i'm kind of trying to minimize the amount of stuff that i own um it's been going really well for me i'm surprised how much of a natural habit it's become and something else i actually want to quickly touch on and this is actually um after i watched rochelle stephanie's video if you don't watch her, I'm going to link her down below. She's also doing a no by year and she does a lot of project pan videos and that type of thing. Um, and 
I found out about her after I had started my no buy and I don't remember if it was before or after I posted my first video but um, Hannah Louise Poston was my main inspiration that kind of or gave me the idea of going on a no buy like I didn't even know it was a thing before that and I know someone else I think it's too much Tash is the one who um, initially came up with the whole idea of the no buy year but I had no idea this was even a thing I had no idea people even did this in 2018 to me it was all new and so I came across Hannah's videos like I've mentioned in my other videos and so I decided to go on one and then I found Rochelle Stephanie some time shortly after that and I really enjoy her videos as well and now she posted a video and she was talking about how the no buy thing is becoming this huge trend which you know what is a really good point because if I think about it so many people are doing a no buy but is no buy really a trend uh not to me i feel like you need a reason to want to do a no buy rather than for it to be a trend unless i mean like i know i started my youtube based on my no buy but it's not so my channel can become this big huge thing like if it does great if it doesn't Oh well, this is just an outlet for me to be able to, you know, use my products, share my thoughts about them, um, make connections with other people like yourself, and I don't know, it, to me it's just more of a community, I'm not really looking to become famous or anything by doing this, I'm doing this more so that I can actually love on the products that I have in my collection so when she brought up the whole thing about it being a trend I was like oh my god she's right it feels like everyone's jumping on this bandwagon to do a no buy because it's trendy right now but here's my thing I feel like if you're gonna do it because it's a trend there's a very high chance you might fail so only do it if your reason behind it or unless you're okay with the reason being that it's a trend and you think you can hold to it fine but I really think you need to look for some deeper meaning behind that you know I think you need to find your real reason why you want to do your no buy maybe it is because it's the whole trend thing but maybe at the end of it your reason is because you want to use your product separate because you don't want to spend money or you want to save money for something I really think that personally, uh, it's my personal opinion that I feel that you actually need a reason to want to do a no buy and not just do it because it's a trend. If you're doing one though because it's the trend or if you're doing one because you have a reason to do it, you know what? Best of luck. I really, really hope you guys succeed and hit your goals and you know that it accomplishes for you what you want it to accomplish for you. I'm not going to say don't do it if it's just because it's a trend. It's totally up to you. I think everyone has um, the right and the freedom to do whatever it is that they want. But I, I think this this whole thing, uh, one year is a very long time. I know a lot of people that know they can't do a no-buy for that long. So they just don't do one at all or they do like a two-week one or they do a one-month one. But everyone had a reason for wanting to do it. But a lot of people just wanted to try it because everyone was doing it. So I I really recommend you guys go watch that video that Rochelle Stephanie did because I feel like it was very informative. And it's kind of eye-opening to this whole no by 2019 because if I really think about it, it really is a big thing. I have seen so many videos pop up in my recommended videos on YouTube a lot of them that pop up are no buys and I'm actually astonished at the number of people that are doing no buys because I had no idea this was even a thing and when I was looking for videos after I had found Hannah's I don't think I found a whole lot like there were some here and there but they were kind of harder to find and now if I search no buy they're everywhere I feel anyways I just wanted to quickly touch on that. I thought Rochelle Stephanie made such a good point in her video. I really, 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 really recommend you go watch it. Um, and let me know what you think. Do you think it's a trend? 
Are you doing it for a reason? And if so, what is your reason? Is it just because it's trendy? Is it because you want to save money? I don't know. I'm nosy. <laughs> I want to know. I think I feel like a lot of my videos lately have probably been boring because all it is is talking. Um, but if there's any cool ideas you feel like I can do just sitting on my living room floor, let me know. And maybe I'll pop some out before we move. Um, but I will have a more set schedule, hopefully. Um, I'm hoping to do two videos a week and then hopefully move up to three slowly, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I just feel like editing right now takes me forever because I'm still learning. Um, but it's fun. It's been fun. Um, I've been having a lot of fun reading comments. And, um, but I am going to head off now. So I hope you're all doing well and I will see you in the next one. Bye.